Hello, I'm Tom Dozier, and this video is on sound sculpting and the Misophonia management protocol. You find when it comes to the intensity of your trigger response, your misophonic response, that when there's no other sounds around, these trigger sounds are going to be clearer. They're more distinct, higher fidelity. They're more noticeable, they're easier to pick out because there's no other sounds competing with them, and they are perceived as louder because of the, the comparison to the quiet, and the louder a trigger sound, the stronger the misophonia reflex. Now, in general, now being triggered is not a good thing because the, it makes the misophonic response worse. It actually does it in two ways. One is it strengthens the actual reflex that hits you, that you feel when you are triggered. And the second thing is that whenever you're being triggered, any repeating sight or sound in the environment can become a trigger. So you don't want any new triggers, so you want to avoid getting triggered. Uh, you just need to avoid it at all costs. And if you're in a trigger situation, you want to escape, get away, move away, or ask them to stop. But you really do not want to tolerate being triggered. Now, one of the things you can do to reduce the strength of that misophonia response uh, is to use background noise. And Dr. Marsha Johnson developed this method of treating misophonia a number of years back. She calls it the Misophonia Management Protocol. And this protocol also recommends uh, therapy, CBT type therapy or DBT or whatever you like, to help you deal with misophonia as a chronic condition. Now, one of the things you want to do in using noise is you want to add noise to the room and you want to add noise to your ears. And then you can block triggers with earplugs, but there's cautions about that. That should be used selectively, discreetly. So when it comes to um, noise, you know, you can use something like a box fan running in the room. It makes a great noise generator. Uh, you can also use uh, a white noise device. Uh, this is a dome uh, white noise device. I'll turn it on here. And there's a fan in there, and it has some adjustment in terms of sound and volume. It has two speeds. Uh, this is an electro fan, and it plugs into a, a USB charger. And it has a, a fan sound, has 10 fan sounds, and then it does 10 white noises, and they're they're selectable for volume. So this seems to be a more highly rated one on Amazon.com. This is very popular with people with misophonia. So I don't have a recommendation of one over the other, whatever you prefer. But you might want to have those in several rooms, in your kitchen, in your living room. I mean, you want to have sound around you. Now you can also uh, use the TV, but that sound varies loud and soft, and it's not as good at blocking or muting down uh, the trigger. And if you have a sound system, then you can use a white noise app or something like that uh, to run through your smartphone and into your, into your system, or you can have, uh, get some white noise, pink noise, brown noise sounds to use. Uh, it depends on you as the individual. Now, the, the audiologist can supply a personal sound environment. And you, they can sell you, provide a, a sound generator that goes behind the ear. And those cost uh, from $1,800 to $4,000 or so. And it has options for different sounds. Uh, it comes with a little remote control, something that a lot of them do. And uh, they're not very conspicuous. Uh, how do you like the ones I'm wearing? See, if I reach back up here and pull this off, 
I can come out with it. And it's very, very little tiny thing here. I uh, show the picture on the screen here, but they're very small. And so they're, they're very discreet. And for a teenage girl, wear your, ear forward, your hair forward. If it's behind your ears, it's invisible. And for guys, it's, it's quite invisible too because it's just it's so small. Now, uh, you can get a white noise app that's very good uh, to run on your, your iPod. And with an iPod, uh, one of my favorite white noise apps is this one here. Uh, it's called White Noise by uh, TM Soft. And you get a free version with 10 sounds and for a big two bucks, you can get uh, the full version with 40 sounds, runs on both Android and iPhone, and you can get a set of Sony Sport headphones. And uh, here's two different models. If you Google Sony Sport headphones, you'll find you can get them at, uh, right now at B&H uh, Photo Video. And uh, they clip over the ear, and the nice thing about these is you can see this, this little black spot here. Uh, that's the speaker, and it sits just on the outside of the ear, so it doesn't plug your ear. So you still have the sound coming in, because both with the, uh, the sound generators that go behind your ear and with uh, an iPod you know, playing white noise or whatever your favorite kind of noise is, and these headphones, you want to still be able to hear people talk uh, and you can raise the volume if you need to when it's a trigger situation to help block them out, drop them down at other times, but you really can reduce the intensity of that pow misophonic response. Because the triggers don't hit you so hard. Now you will still be triggered, but if it's a trigger that doesn't overpower you, then you can deal with it. And it, uh, Dr. Johnson's uh, studies and you know tracking the data on these people shows that generally their misophonia is under is under control with this system and it makes life livable so getting some sound into your home getting noise into your rooms is a very positive thing and the about 60 percent of the people that go in to see Dr. Johnson end up using and liking the little behind-the-ear sound generators. But you can try it out if you want to using your iPod and using uh, an open-ear headphone, which open-ear headphones are less than $20 if you get the Sony Sport brand. The, um, what Dr. Johnson's reported at the last conference, of Misophonia conference, is that the misophonia manage, management protocol tends to reduce the severity of a person's misophonia. And kind of on average, it looks like if you take the misophonia assessment questionnaire, which is uh, 21 questions on a scale of 0 to 3, maximum score of 63, and you break it into severe, moderate, and mild, what you find is that you kind of get one level of reduction with the misophonia management protocol. You go from severe to moderate or moderate to mild. It's not a cure, but it makes life much better. And it's really a very good thing immediately to go do because it reduces the severity of your misophonia right away. So, the key to this is having this open ear so that you can still hear, understanding that you're still going to get triggered, but to a lesser level. And you can increase the volume of your, of your background, of your sound, of your iPod, or of your uh, sound generator when you need to, when it's a higher trigger situation, or you're just more sensitive. And you can do, decrease the volume when, you're, when it's not needed. And the therapy, the 6 to 12 weeks of therapy is recommended to help you learn coping skills 
to deal with this, these, you know, boom, upsetting uh, trigger events. And there had, was a case study just published using uh, CBT for mesophonia that had uh, quite, a, quite a good result with the individual. Didn't eliminate the triggers, but it allowed the person to cope with them in a more positive way. Now, at the dinner table, you can have some tricky situations here, even with the sound generators, because the headphones, um, in fact, you, you can just use regular earbud headphones so that you can block out some of the sounds, but that doesn't let you still communicate and carry on with life. But at the dinner table, you can be using uh, open-ear headphones or even earbuds, but still be visually triggered because headphones don't block out visual triggers, and visual triggers are standalone. Once a visual trigger develops, then it's a unique standalone trigger, and even if you get rid of the, the crunching trigger, the visual of the jaw movement is still going to be a trigger to the person. Um, I'm working with a, a family who, with a child with misophonia, and they want to eat dinner, have dinner together, so they all sit on the same side of the table because that's what's necessary to allow them to do it. And it's better than the child uh, eating in the room by herself. So again, and kind of in summary, the misophonia management uh, with sound, it's the quickest intervention. It gives you an immediate reduction in the trigger reflex. Uh, you can completely block the trigger if you turn the sound up and wear earbuds or uh, some uh, other headphones. And for, so you can eliminate triggering in certain situations. But you really want to add noise to the trigger situation so that it reduces the overall severity of the trigger uh, and makes life more bearable. But I do want to say that uh, this re using the, the noise to reduce the severity of the trigger is not a cure. It doesn't have, cause the reflex to just die out. It's a, it's a way of dealing with misophonia as a chronic condition. And remember, it has no effect on visual triggers, so you still have to have to deal with those. So thank you for watching this video on sound sculpting and the misophonia management protocol. Uh, if you find this beneficial and valuable to you, we'd appreciate a donation. We'll use that money for education, misophonia awareness, research, and developing treatments. Thank you very much.